Hi all, let's see some of the JavaScript interview questions. So as I said earlier, here my point is not to explain uh, each and every question like this. So my point here is to uh, take some of the theme from this question so that we can uh, answer a number of similar type of questions. So let's start with delete operator. So the point we need to remember here is delete operator works on the objects. We can delete properties of an object not variables there's the first point the second point is if delete operation is correct i mean it could if delete operator is success then it returns true if delete operator is failed then it returns false so these are the two points we need to keep in mind now let's see we have a variable name so now we are trying to delete a variable name so as we learned delete operator works on the object properties not on the variables and its return type would be false now because it couldn't able to delete the variable. So now we have age 21 like this. So we have anything which was declared in ES6 or JavaScript like this. It would be attached to window. Window dot age here. It would be like internally. It would be like a window dot age is equal to 21 because by default we have any browser default object is window. And these variables would be attached to that browser. So we have an object window and a property called age 21. So now we are trying to delete that property. So now we could able to delete that property. So it returns true. So this is the main point we need to understand regarding the delete operator. So coming to the private variables. So if a class was declared in this way, and uh, if you see anything like this, so don't feel that it is an error kind of thing. So these are known as a private variables. We can declare private variables like this. This is a new feature we got from ES 2020. So like this, we can declare the private variables from now. So that's fine. Now we have a class. We have created an object for that class. We call increment method and we are trying to access a private variable here. Now what would be the output? We'll be getting an error here because this is a private variable as we discussed. These private variable can be accessed only within the class. So within the class, we can use the private variable, but we are trying to access its value outside the class. So that's the reason we'll be getting an error here. So in order to get that value, we can use a method here. So get name. If I use a get name like this method, it will return the same value the private value here itself so for any of the private variables we can't access them directly outside the class we need to use some of the methods inside the class so these methods can access the private variables because those are within the class so the these are the points we need to remember and this is a new way of declaring the private variables so coming to the next question imports and exports so like uh, i have a counter.js file here I have declared account 10 and I'm trying to export that value outside. So anyone can import this value and they can use this value. So now I have a count, I am trying to import that value here. I'm importing that in a variable import my counter and I'm trying to increment that value. So with one, so what happens here? So everyone would be the tempting answer would be the 10 uh, or 11 because uh, the value of the counter is 10. So now we are trying to increment it by one. So it would be the 11. Most of us may say that, but here the answer would be the error. We'll be getting an error. The reason here is anything which we import. So we have exported something. So we are trying to import something. So all the imports are read only. So the main point here is all the imports are read only. Those should be used as these. Not we can't modify I mean, I can do plus one to that, but I can't do an increment operator plus plus on that. So that's the reason we get an error here. These fields are read only properties. Not only every import statements would be a read only. So if there is any function declared in this file, so only I can access that file if I export and uh, I declare a function like uh, something like add here only I can access this. I can send two variables like this and it can return the sum. I can't modify this function as I have uh, imported. 
so these are the main point here we need to understand is all the import statements would be like a read only we can't modify directly those values just we can we can use that if it is a value you can just use that value if it is a function you can just pass the variables and you can get the return value if still you wanted to change something assign that to a variable here so you can assign a count variable here and you can assign that counter here and now you can use this count and you can modify whatever you need because this count is local to you local to your file and it can be accessed only via you are assigning that value to this count so in this way you can modify if you wanted to modify so the main theme of this question is the import statements are only read only you can't modify directly or you can't do any operations directly on them so coming to the next question this is regarding uh, imports and the required statements we need to have a uh, some basic understanding of how import works how re uh, require works so here i, I will uh, try to explain that so we have a index.js file a console and we have imported sum.js and we are trying to call some function so for simplicity purpose i have a uh, wrote everything in one file so in sum.js there is one console and uh, if someone calls this sum operator it will return the sum between a and b so now see if i run node uh, index.js node uh, space index.js if i run this file so anyhow, I need to run this file first. So if I run this file, what would be the output? So before answering this, so there are a number of options here. So uh, before answering this, we need to have the understanding of import, how import statement works. Import statements are pre-passed. So it means like uh, when I run this file, it will go and search for the import statement. So it will first import, import statement would be running. Prepass means it will search for the imports. So first it will go to this file and uh, running sum.js would be printed first. And later on it will come back and it will print running index.js. And later on it is calling some function. So it will return sum. So three would be printed here. So if we are using import, so the option B would be the right import. So in this place, if you are trying to use require if you instead of import uh, there may be another syntax like uh, we can change that to require and uh, oh sorry i think it is taking something yeah you can require and you can import the sum file like this as well okay and you can uh, assign this to some of the constant or something like that. So you can do this, okay? If you do this, what happens? So now we understood imports are pre-passed. Pre In sense, imports are first executed. So now, whereas require is not like that. Require is executed on demand. It means it will load, it will load the dependencies on demand. Now, in this case, index.js would be executed first, and later on, in index sum would be uh, sum.js would be executed next, and next, the sum would be executed. So it means the first option would be correct if you are going with requires. So here, the main intention of uh, uh, telling this question is you need to aware of these two points: the import statements are pre-passed. And require statements are loading load they load the dependencies on demand so that's the reason of uh, getting two different options here so hope you understand the video thanks for watching